This is a video response to Qualia Soup's Irreducible Complexity Cutdown to Size video. Please watch Qualia Soup's video first. I want to commend Qualia Soup on a good set of presentations. I appreciate the clear and articulate explanations to otherwise fairly complex topics. To clarify, I am not a supporter of the intelligent design movement, nor of intelligent design being taught in public schools, but I consider the topic of irreducible complexity worth evaluating further. In my opinion, the phrase irreducible complexity was an unfortunate choice of words. It sounded really good at first and quickly got the public's attention, but ended up backfiring and destroying the very thing Behe was trying to accomplish. To prove that something is not irreducibly complex, all that is needed is one single reduction. Kenneth Miller did this with the flagellament of type 3 secretory system. However, being able to point to one or even a handful of reductions for structures that might require hundreds of them only takes us so far. Can it be that some structures, though partly reducible, might still be too complex to evolve? The answer from the evolution supporter will typically be no. There's no reason to think the structures could not evolve. After all, the evolutionary process is backed up by a wealth of evidence. We know of no alternative, scientifically valid process that could explain how such structures would come to exist apart from evolution. Intermediate stages do exist in nature, and there are known mechanisms that can produce the apparently irreducible elements, mechanisms like the removing of a part to get the final configuration rather than the adding of a part. And this is where things get complicated, because now there's an additional issue that must be addressed, the lack of alternatives to evolution. If there's no other way for a structure to get here except through evolution, of course its evolution will tend to seem plausible, irrespective of complexity. I want, however, to be able to evaluate the question of complexity impartially, without the crutch of not having other options besides evolution. So for the time being, let's pretend that there actually was an alternative. Let's pretend that complex biological structures could have come to exist by some other means as well. Under these circumstances, what would it take to know for a fact that something like the human eye did evolve? Well, the only way to determine with certainty the potential of a structure to evolve is to retrace the actual steps the structure would have to take to evolve. For something like the human eye, this would mean starting with an early ancestral organism that completely lacks any kind of genetic information for an eye and working out all the steps needed to get to the present-day genetics. We will need to take a look not only at the development of the seeing apparatus, but also of a nervous system capable of processing the visual data. And, to bring things into perspective, we must consider that in spite of all our technological advances, we have yet to develop a complex enough device that can replace the human eye and restore sight to the blind. So it is not a creationist exaggeration to say that the human eye is in fact very complex. With that in mind, let's think through the actual steps involved. First, all the genetic information in the human genome coding for the eye would need to be identified. This would be our endpoint. As already mentioned, the starting point would need to be an organism on the human ancestral tree whose DNA contains no genetic information relating to any kind of eye precursor. We would then need to work out all the intermediate stages that would take us from a state where no genetic information for the eye exists to the current genetic state. Just like a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, we would have to work through each of the stages since problems could occur at any point along the way. The following questions will need to be addressed when going from each stage to the next. 1. How many specific genetic changes or mutations are needed to reach the next stage? 2. Will each genetic change provide an advantage to the organism even if not directly related to improved vision? 3. If any genetic change does not offer a reproductive advantage, what is the statistical probability that the next stage will still be reached within a reasonable time frame? 4. Will there ever be situations where to reach the next stage, genetic changes will have to occur that will place the organism at a temporary disadvantage? 
and if so, how likely is it to reach the next stage in spite of this? And 5. Does the rate of improvement derived from this statistical analysis coincide with what can be observed in the fossil record and can accurate predictions be made? The only other things we know of with comparable complexity are man-made devices. And with these, the more complex a device is, the more individual changes are needed to bring it to the next level of complexity. Sometimes all parts have to be removed in order for better ones to be put in place. At other times, entire shifts in architecture must occur. While these improvements are being made, not only is there no immediate benefit, but often the device becomes less functional overall. If the same thing happened in living organisms, natural selection would actually resist such changes. If several changes were needed to obtain a better eye, but while those changes occurred the eye became temporarily less functional, the organism would be placed at a competitive disadvantage. Even if it could be demonstrated that in complex biological structures this is never the case and somehow the needed changes to get from one stage to the next would never place the organism at a disadvantage, natural selection still has nothing to work with unless there is an actual advantage each step of the way. And, the more complex the structure, the more unlikely it is that every minor change will provide an advantage. When the eye is in the earlier stages of development, it's easy to see how statistically improbable changes could still occur. The enormous population sizes of most simple organisms and their fast reproductive rates could account for otherwise unlikely genetic changes. But as organisms become more complex, population sizes decrease dramatically and reproductive rates slow down as well. So while the eye is in need of more complex changes, the opportunity for them to occur is significantly reduced. All in all, if we really did approach the eye's evolution impartially, we would probably be a lot as certain that something like the human eye could evolve. We would feel that a lot more evidence was needed to know for sure, evidence which we very likely don't even yet have the technical ability to produce. Now this might appear like an argument against evolution, but rather it is evolution that was intended to be a solution to the problem of biological complexity. And for a solution to be valid, it needs to account for all the complexities of the problem it is trying to address. Simplistic explanations about light-sensitive cells forming a shallow cup covered by mucus leave the question almost entirely unanswered. So while Behe might have overreached with his claim of irreducible complexity, semi-irreducible complexity is very much still a factor. At least more people would think so if evolution wasn't the only available alternative. I can address the topic of evolution alternatives in a future video if there is sufficient interest.